Welcome back to Monroe Live. I am Carl and, and I am Nakisha Granberry. We're here at the Interior and Testing Expo and it's been a couple years since we actually uh, visit the Expo. So we would like to show you all what we have to offer, what the Expo has to offer. So uh, tune, stay tuned. Oh, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> okay. That one was perfect. We should leave and leave that in. <laughs> Welcome back to Monroe Live. I am Carl. And I am Nakisha Granberry. We're here at the Interior and Testing Expo. It's been a couple of years since we actually visit uh, since the pandemic. So we like to share with you what the Expo has to offer. You're Carl? awesome. So this is a very interesting material. We've seen it in several different places. A lot of people see that with the uh, transparent glass on restrooms, yes. where you exactly. can light up and right. hide. But so for your product here, mm -hmm. initially looking at sunroofs, moonroofs, and vehicles. Right, it's a typical application on sunroofs on automobile. But as you have said to us, we can go beyond what is typical, and we can try and expand. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of vehicles now that really want panoramic glass or right. complete overheads mm -hmm. of glass, mm -hmm. but some people don't want to be sitting in that much sun mm -hmm. trying to have an actual moving screen to cover that large panoramic glass and hide all the mechanisms mm -hmm. that's a big ask that's yes. a lot of motors whatnot but if you can have a glass or some sort of a panel mm -hmm. that can transform itself from being clear to being opaque mm -hmm. that would help to alleviate some of that problem exactly. and as you have said for some people who want to do communication, car-to-car -car communication, mm -hmm. or advertising. Mm -hmm. By making this a opaque material, mm -hmm. you can now actually apply graphics while right. it is in its opaque yes, state. Can project images. Yeah. It's very interesting. Thank you, Carl. And that's actually, you can project images like on the back of a window of a vehicle? Or yes, just, you can, yes. Okay. So what are we looking at here? All right. I see a street view, I see light posts, I see vehicles, I see people. Now this is what I see, but what does a vehicle see? And that is the important thing about something like this. If I had components that are going to be attached to that vehicle, radar, light, not LIDAR, but I want to understand if the vehicle's logic system is actually understanding and interpreting correctly what it is seeing. This cell, this chamber, is a way to test those individual radar pieces of equipment. I can put that in here and I can present it with an image. I can present it with a sample of real traffic, pedestrians, and I can present that radar and that logic system with a situation, a set of scenarios. And I can test that radar to see, are you actually identifying what I'm showing you correctly? Are you interpreting it? And can you do that repeatably? So, if I wanted to change something with that sensor and I was dealing with road testing on a real road, all right, well, I've changed something with the sensor. Now I want to rerun the test, but the road conditions are always going to be a little different. The lighting's going to be different. The setup is going to be different. The cars that are moving that timer are going to be different. But on this cell, I can run the exact same simulation. I can show it the same field and say, all right, this is what you interpreted last time. Are you interpreting the same thing on this next go around? A system like this enables that type of a testing of a radar system, correct? Absolutely, and one other thing. Now I can go explore the edges of the operational design domain. I can really go see, what if I take that truck right to the edge of its, its leaning now, and maybe two wheels are coming off the road, the field of view is changing. How is it still interpreting the world? But I don't really wish to take a full semi to that place. Sure. And I can go do dangerous things to people and equipment without putting them in jeopardy. So if we were looking at this field, and if I was actually in a vehicle on a road, I came up to a stop sign, I hit my brakes. Someone came up in front of me and I had to hit very quickly. Your system can actually behave the way the vehicle would behave. Exactly. Knowing the way the vehicle is designed, 
if I am tipping down, it can respond. If I'm taking a corner quickly, it can respond. Exactly. So the system can actually change the view of that radar in response to the feedback that the radar is giving it. And that's what makes it closed loop. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Pleasure. But does it also detect like, okay, um, like the bus, yep. the bus in the car, let's just say uh, there's a car that's going around and you're driving, but let's just say if a car just jumps over, would it detect? You get what I'm saying? Like, Well, the detection isn't his point of view. It is the presentation would, of the information. I provide that challenge to the system and then we oh, see if it detects. I see, okay. Okay, so pretty much what happens is that you will create the design, yep. import it into this machine, exactly. and uh, it will preparate a blocker. Yeah. Okay. Then the and system will recognize uh, automatically the position of the blocker. Okay. Turn on the vacuum to hold uh, the leather between the part of the, uh, the working surface. Sure. Just automatically. Arrive. Now let's let's speak on uh, interior, automotive interior. Is it for like, uh, let's say seat, complete it's, seat it's insert? It's for everything. It's uh, for seat, for uh, uh, door, door panels, okay, uh, dashboards. So this is just a scanner here? Yeah, it's for checking, the... yeah, checking holes and uh, border the, the panel. Okay. So oh, very cool. Yeah, uh, it's found uh, uh, 22,709 uh, holes. Uh, and check uh, with projector or uh, on screen. So is this the design that was imported into the machine, the perforated machine? The yeah, actual the, template? Yeah, okay, yeah, it's perfect. The, it's the DXF file. And in uh, DXF file, you have uh, holes and also the, uh, the, the perimeter, the, the, the panel, uh, and, the same, and the same file, yeah. Excellent. This video is sponsored by Anchor in their GAN Prime multi-device fast charging lineup. Now you can charge all your devices at once with GAN Prime, Anchor's most intelligent multi-device fast charging system. Built with an all GAN structure, Anchor GAN Prime chargers take full advantage of GAN to reduce energy loss and improve circuit efficiency. By using an innovative interlocking structure and stacked architecture, Anchor was able to reduce the size of their charger by 53% while also lowering the operating temperature. This temperature reduction can protect the charger to ensure it lasts up to 2.4 times longer. Greatly improve your charging experience today with Anchor GAN Prime. I need to understand how we are going to make parts. The design is completely up to the OEM. They want their design. I have to know how am I going to support their design. All right, part of their design is going to be materials. They want a certain foam thickness. They want a certain density. This pink foam is a sew foam. It actually has a thin fabric backing, foam, and then raw on top. When this machine is stitching, the thread is being captured by this thin fabric backing. It's keeping these stitches from pulling away. So we have a sew foam, then we have our top vinyl. This is the pattern that is being created. Now you'll notice that these patterns are being replicated on one piece. These are seat inserts. So basically it's going in the middle of the back of the seat. This pattern is uniquely designed for that seat. Now you can see that here. You see these notches? Those are actually alignment notches that are used in the final sewing process when I have to join this piece to another piece. You'll notice that most of this pattern slightly overlaps this line. 
the reason why it is doing that is because when I cut this, I don't want to cut it and then have a loose thread that can then unravel. So it is being trapped by the perimeter sew. And you also can um, tell the tolerance, the stitch per inch. Can you see how many stitches per inch that they're actually uh, programming on? on that this looks about six. Which is tolerable. Yep. Yes. So pretty much with this quilting area, you can use it for um, whether it's for a door panel or insert for a complete feed. And I believe this is more efficient than just a sole operator sewing it on the uh, machine. A joke, a joke yes, machine. trying to do this by hand would take a long time, but even watching this machine run, this takes a long time. So if an OEM wants to commit to a design like this, it's gonna be an expensive part just because of machine time. But the cool thing is you'll notice that we have a couple of different patterns being sewn here with the same outside perimeter. Sure. So if they wanna change the look, they can change the programming of the machine. You'll get a different look, but you still have the same finished part. Uh, Zoom America, where I'm speaking to Adam about the uh, cut, the Zoom cutting machine. And what it is, is a hide. He's going to cut a hide. First thing, a part of the process is like we, because um, I used to say in my past, I worked in Gerber and Lecture cutting. But with this um, machine, the first thing you do is upload the patterns into your software. And yep. then um, next you just scan the hide itself. Yeah, so next we're going to take a picture of the hide. Um, so I'll do that right now. Okay. So the software itself, it works in different tabs. So we have, we talked about our files right there. So we have our list and this could be our cut order, um, our production order. So we have our list of files by quantity. We can have different characteristics of the file right there. Um, next, I want to create a material. So okay. I'm going to do that using my camera. I can also do that just by making the entire work area um, my material and just drag and drop parts with an injector. So you can see we have that hole right there. Sure. Um, we could also have it previously marked if we use a pen, but since I have the ability to do it digitally, we're gonna do it that way. So I'm gonna pull up, modify my sketch, bring up the, top, uh, the draw tool. I have a wireless mouse, so I just have to bring my cursor down here. Draw a circle around there. Nice. Mark that as hole and now we have an imperfection. Now once I've finished with that I can now go into my nesting tab and I can either nest just by bringing parts down and nesting manually Okay. or if I want to let the software do it I can just click the play button and it'll nest automatically. And what component are you cutting out? Like what component are you using? Is it like a door panel, seat, uh, so these are seed parts. Uh, some of the, some of them are furniture parts. So um, it's just we can cut anything but steel and glass on the cutting system. So it can be anywhere from the seat to the foam. Um, really, whatever is available to cut, we can really cut. The vacuum is running, and we're focusing the vacuum right over the part instead of on the entire surface. So as it's finishing parts, you'll hear the different pneumatic zones switching and focusing all the vacuum area on the specific part that's cutting. Very cool. Now, let's just say you have notches so that once you cut the patterns, the, does it recognize the notches on here when, yep. you, when it's time to sew? So you can see that we do have notches in these parts. These are slit notches, so we're not okay. cutting these. Sure. But you'll see it, the knife just go in to the material a little bit to identify those notches. Perfect. We also have a notching tool for one of our other uh, model machines where we can punch those notches out automatically. So this is something that's actually interesting to me embossing, debossing. All right, how are we doing that? That King Ranch tradition where you have on the headrest or on the seat back, you have that pattern. Sometimes they wanna have this on the center of an airbag. What type of tooling is actually creating this image? There's a couple of choices. 
In this particular instance for the King Ranch, this is a brass machine die, which is CNC tool. The other option would be a magnesium die that's chemically etched. So we take customer artwork, 100% uh, black and white vector artwork, and we expose it to a sheet of magnesium that has a photoresist over the top, and then we acid etch everything that's not protected by the photoresist. So then you come out with a finished piece that you can press into leather uh, to deboss, you can emboss it. A lot of times in the automotive industry, you'll have a piece that's debossed, and on the back, there'll be a filler piece to keep it from falling back down. We call that spring back. So when you press into a material, the material wants to spring back yep. to its natural form. Uh, so when you protect it from behind with a, another substrate, it will help it not do that. So you get a finished product that looks... So comparing this Rolls-Royce emblem to the King Ranch emblem, a little education for yes. people, the difference between embossing or debossing. So in, in our world, debossing is pressing your image down into the material below the original substrate surface area. Mm -hmm. Embossing is the opposite. So you lift the image you want to have decorated. You lift that up above the rest of the substrate level. So that is the correct answer. <laughs> and no one uses that answer. Everyone does this and everyone calls this embossing correct. and it's not. So thank you for that correction. I'm listening to them, trying to take them out, really take them out. <laughs> That's going to drive a pull that trigger all the way, including right now. All right, drivers, so pull your trigger now. So you ready. On your mark, get set, go. Good start. Once you start trailing behind, you're going to be a, probably a victim of the pack. But why you got to watch your car? You're going to be one of, Oh, you played before. Oh, no, no, no. Purple's off. Oh. That one's off. This one's off. Oh, red, too? Well, we dropped quick on that, driver. So we got yellow and blue left. Blue and yellow, you two are left. Now you think about it, you do have to split up so you can go after each other. The fans paid to see a good finale. There you go, that, that's it, there you go. Just drive like you're late for the office. You know? That's the best way to think about it, just drive like you're late for work. Go through that intersection. Got about 25. Oh. This requires a tie breaker. So we're going to do a tie breaker. 20 seconds, sudden death. All right. Blue's ready, yellow's ready. Good luck. On your mark, get set, go. Get it done. Blue takes that victory lap. Just smile, wave at all your fans. So when we walked around the expo today, we were really seeing the how. We were seeing the suppliers and their efforts to create a new product, but they don't know what that product will be until the OEM gives them a request. So, it's perceived quality, correct? I agree. Pretty much overall, what we saw was uh, quality, efficiency, and saving time. Overall. So, different solutions that are being provided by the suppliers that are giving you those time savings, that are allowing you to have a higher end looking part, but yet possibly with a lower cost efficiencies in tooling? Yes. Because again, these people are developing the how. They are not creating the what. They are waiting for the OEMs to define a what, but they are pre-making solutions to be able to support them. So I think that it's actually more beneficial to see an expo like this than it is to see the auto show. Yes, the auto show is big and flashy. Yes, you can see a nicely polished vehicle. But when I want to know what the possibilities are, I see possibilities here. I only see realities there. So thank you for watching Monroe Live. Thank you, guys.